Let's go now to our keynote on Empowered Web3 Development. We're joined by Ivan Lildequist, founder of Morales, entrepreneur and software developer. Welcome, Ivan. Ivan's on his way. Take your time. I'm here. Thank you very much. We have a clicker. Oh, perfect. All right. Welcome, everyone. Good to be here. Testing clicker. Perfect. So this speech, this keynote is going to be about building. And it's on, not only for developers. It's for everyone who wants to build. Maybe you want to start a project. You want to join a project. You want to reboot your current project. It's all about building. And my name is Ivan. I'm known as Ivan on Tech in the Web3 community. Uh, I'm founder of uh, Morales, and we are doing Web3 infrastructure, Web3 APIs, Web3 SDKs, all in order to ensure that building is easy. Because Web3 is so important. What is Web3? Many people don't know it. Even though they work in Web3, they still don't know it. Web3 is all about digital ownership and property rights. Because today online, we have no property rights. And so Web3 is the tech that allows us to have digital ownership, digital property rights for the first time ever. And of course, when you see that, we're becoming more and more online. We're spending all our time now in mobile phone. Soon, it's going to be all in VR. So the trend is more and more online, more and more digital, and that future deserves ownership rights, which we don't have today. So that's why building in Web3 is so important and so crucial, but there are still many questions to, to, to answer. How to log in users, how to get their transactions from different chains, how to get all their data in real time, and how to sync everything in real time. So we're going to be discussing some technical challenges, but also, once you have built something, how do you make it big? It's very difficult. We're going to discuss that as well, both the fundamentals, but also the fundamentals, as, as we say, to make something go global, go big, to actually get adoption. So first and foremost, we're going to discuss the technical side. And from the technical side, we have a development workflow. When we are building dApps, there is a workflow. If you're building a website, there's also a workflow. If you're building a mobile app, there's also a workflow. So even if you're not a developer, this is still very important for you. Because at some point, you got to hire devs. At some point, you got to grow your team. So if you know this dApp development workflow, at least you know the different components in an application in Web3 that you need to hire for, that you need to grow your team in. And really, there are these four different parts of the workflow. Because number one is identity. All dApps require login. You have to connect your MetaMask or some other wallet to a backend. You got to connect maybe your existing users that logged in with email and password to a wallet, maybe to MetaMask or something else. So that's number one. Number two is all about real time. Once they log in, how do you get all their information? How do you know when they do something? How do you send them notification when they do something? How do you know when they trade on your marketplace? How do you know when they buy or sell digital assets in your ecosystem? And number three is how to access data from the blockchain via APIs. So this can be, for example, historical data. Let's say that someone logged in and you want to know their assets, which assets they had in the past, which assets they will have uh, within the coming future based on their past activity. And finally, number four, it's all about SDKs, how to integrate this into tech stacks. Let's say you have a Node.js application or a .NET application, you got to integrate it. So these are the four different, uh, different parts. And so the first one, as we discussed, is identity. The challenge here comes with the fact that now users are everywhere. So you got to have good identity solutions. Users can be on Solana, they can be on Ethereum, on Polygon. So it's very important to be able to log them in and to get all their assets, all their activities from all the different chains. And that's what we provide with Morales Identity. So Morales helps you to manage all of this so that all the security is in check 
so that you verify signatures correctly and that everything works as it does in Web 2 from a development perspective, meaning that devs don't have to figure out a lot. Just like in Web 2, when you want to log in with Google, you, you don't have to figure out a lot. It's already done. It's one line of code in most cases. So our vision for the Web 3 development stack is that it should be as easy as the Web 2 development stack. You want to log in someone, one line of code. All chains, all layer twos, all assets, all NFTs. And uh, of course, it's very important that you also can integrate different other providers. So what we've ensured to build at Morales is a platform where, let's say you want to use Magic Link, let's say you want to use Web3 Auth, which are different solutions that are tying different services together. Let's say you want to connect Google to your DAP, or let's say you want to connect Twitter to your DAP, so users can log in using social login. Uh, we have a very easy integration with all of these different providers. Uh, and dashboards. Very important. In your team, you may have devs, you may have non-devs. So having a nice dashboard where you can see all the activity, all the users, what they're doing, how active they are, and so on and so forth, uh, so forth is key as well. Uh, the third thing when it comes to identity is standards. Because in Web 2, there are good standards already. We know how to, how to do, for example, single sign-on SSO. And Web 3 needs to be compatible with Web 2. If we want to have adoption, it cannot be fully separate system. Just like when iPhone came, iPhone could call Nokia. Imagine if iPhone came, it cannot call Nokia. It will never get adoption. The same thing is with Web3. We're building all these identity solutions, but they better be compatible with Web2. So that if you have an existing Web2 database, it's fully compatible with your new users that are coming with Web3 uh, Web wallets, or that you can take your existing Web2 users and add Web3 wallets to them. So that's very, very key as well. And uh, of course, uh, cross-platform, layer two, layer three, and so on and so forth. So if you want to learn how to do all of this when it comes to identity, it's actually education for free. You can go to YouTube, you can subscribe to Morales Web3, and you can learn this with videos. If you're a developer, fantastic. It's, it's going to be very easy for you. Even if you're not a developer, still very easy to get started, to see how it works. You don't have to dev it, but you better know it at least, so you know approximately what your devs are doing. Uh, and finally, it's all about templates. You want to log in with Wallet Connect, one line of code. You want to log in with uh, MetaMask, one line of code. You want to log in with uh, a Coinbase Wallet or Kronos Wallet, one line of code. So that's identity. Number two is all about real time. The fact that when the user does something, you get it in real time in your application. It's also one line of code. You have your user address, you write one line of code, and now your backend gets in real time webhooks for everything the user does. And the same thing here uh, is important with, uh, uh, with uh, templates, because you, you may want to watch the user token transfers, NFT transfers. There are many templates, but also you may be wanting to watch your user do something in your specific smart contract. And there is your implementation. So it's very important to be flexible. If you want to do something standard, one line of code. You want to do own implementation, you should be able to provide your own ABI, contract address, and so on and so forth. So for developers, both identity and streaming real-time data with Morales is a matter of a few lines of code. Saves a lot of time, a lot of development time, and also, it un unlocks this whole talent pool, this whole talent pool of Web 2 developers that now can do Web 3. And really, that's our biggest mission, because if we want to go global and mainstream with Web 3, we got to first empower devs. Because if devs are spending you know, six months to, to do simple things like this, they're never going to push use cases. They're never going to delight users. And we're never going to go mainstream. So our mission is that first, empowering devs, devs can build things very quickly, they can then build great things for the users and focus on the users and not focus on the plumbing and the back end, which we do. So the third aspect of the workflow are the APIs. The fact that if you want to query specific data, let's say you want to know what NFTs a user has right now, you want to know what tokens they have, you want to know the metadata of NFTs very easy with Morales API, cross-chain, super smooth. Let's say you want to know what the user did, all their, all their activity from the blockchain. Since they started being active, you can do a historical import. So let's say you have a, a, a group of developers. You can easily 
have them import all the historical data for any address for any smart contract, which is important because in some cases you have different, you have different use cases where it's key, where you got to know everything. Let's say you're building some kind of accounting solution or some kind of other solution where data integrity, where each and every record is important, and you got to know all of them. So historical imports are key, very easy with Morales APIs. Also, from a DevX experience, we're focusing a lot of developer experience, the fact that devs can, can do their job easily. You can easily see which DAP is using which endpoints. So you may have a project with many different DAPs, many different uh, parts of your system. You can easily see where the usage is coming from. And finally, the fourth aspect of the DAP development workflow are the SDKs. The fact that all of this is easy to use. Because now we discussed identity, real time, API, but how to use it? How can I have this one line of code experience? Well, that is done through the SDKs. The fact that if you have a C Sharp developer, Node.js developer, Java developer, they download an SDK for their specific tech stack, and then they can basically do everything with one line of code. So SDK is basically this glue that ensures that whatever you want to do, it's all unified, it's all coherent, it's, um, it makes sense, it's easy to onboard new developers because they can quickly understand how the system works. And another important thing of RSDKs that allow all of this is modularity, that uh, you can really import only what you need. Because when you have a website, let's say, and your SDK is massive, it's like two megabytes, it's going to be very slow loading. It's going to be small. It's going to be a few, a few hundred kilobytes, maybe. So with RSDKs, you can pick and choose which features you want so you don't bloat your website or bloat your mobile app because no one wants to waste data downloading useless things. Cross-platform, very important. Again, .NET, Java, JavaScript, Python. Uh, our ambition is to be everywhere. Currently, we support JavaScript very well, .NET very well, Python coming soon. But again, our ambition is to be everywhere. And from a tech perspective, now you understand how to, how to start, how to onboard developers, and how to get going. So now we have the fundamentals. Let's speak a bit about uh, fundamentals. Now that we have built something, how do we get people to use it? Because I think the biggest problem is people build something and no one uses, and uh, no one cares. So in this second part of the speech, I will be sharing some success recipes that we've seen our clients use that have worked very well, and the common patterns, and also the traps. So one trap, of course, is that you build something and then no one cares. I, I, I guess that happens a lot. I know it happens a lot. Uh, so we're going to go through some uh, case studies. So number one is that you've got to have a community. But how do you get the community to care about you? Because community is busy. Commu community has uh, 500 telegrams, 500 discords. They, they don't have time for another one. So it's all about making it work for them. Can they, for example, be part of something unique, some mission? It's got to be mission-driven. At some point, you got to attract users with a purpose so that users can be here in the bear market and the bull market. And that, that's why it takes time to rethink what is the mission. What is the reason for existence? Because if the project doesn't have reasons, a reason for existence, it, it's going to be difficult with community. So we speak a lot about community. But uh, it's very important to, to have reason for existence of the community of projects. So that's the first part. And nothing of this is easy, by the way. It takes time. But um, a lot of projects also miss all of this. Uh, great utility seems to be like a no-brainer. But at the same time, not many projects are here that were here just a few months ago. Why no utility? Very important. And we've seen good examples, whether you look at Aave or Compound or even Lens Protocol, many of them have great utility. And it doesn't have to be something complex. A lot of it is very simple. For example, you get voting rights. For example, you get, um, you get to be part of the future development of the project. And in some cases, it's in-game currencies, or in some cases, it's something else. But it's got to be connected to something, all right? So just utility of the token doesn't matter if it's not connected to something interesting. So let's say, for example, a game. Let's say, for example, a lending protocol. So utility at the end of the day is not about the token. It's about first having reason to exist, then building something for that reason to exist, and then token utility will be taken, uh, uh, will be automatic basically for you if you have the first few things figured out. And then the last thing is to build good and fast. Okay, you, you gotta do both because at the end of the day, people love creating in this industry. People build all the time, and sometimes. There is this um, dilemma, should I, should, I be, uh, should I build good or fast? But in, at the end of the day, you got to do both. Because 
you got to go to market quickly, show something to the user, get feedback from them, come back with something better. And that's also a way of building community, that you can build things that are good and fast. And of course, the question is, where do I cut the scope? This is the most important thing. You can be good and fast, but you cut the scope. Remove features. Do one feature. Do it good and fast. So good and fast doesn't mean to have you know, a million features. It needs to be a cut scope, very, very de well-defined reason for existence, going to market, getting first feedback, iteration, and so on and so forth. Um, moving on. So of course, with Morales, that's the whole point. We want to empower devs to not build for six months, and then no one cares. We want to empower devs to build a prototype in a few days, show it, and see if it works. And if it works, perfect. Then we have our enterprise-grade APIs to go big, to go global. So it's very important. And uh, many projects fail because of this. They build a for a long time, and then nothing happens. So one of the important case studies I want to show you is from Gala Games, who, fo who focus on this uh, fun-first approach, which is key. Again, it comes to reason for existence. Many people, they start backwards. They start with, OK, let's do a token and then figure out something. But uh, let's flip it. It's time that we start flipping it in this industry. We've been too token first. Now we've got to do fun first. We've got to do a product and reason for existence first, and then figure out the token. Uh, and uh, another example is the Delta, Delta wallet uh, that is using Morales for NFCs. Uh, and of course, it's, it's massive with stocks, with bonds. But a use case is simple. You have people using Web2. They, they like trading stocks and, and bonds and all of that. Let's add Web3. I love that that we're, we're integrating Web3 into Web2. Because Web3 is not replacing Web2. It's integrating. And uh, the most important thing here is that uh, NFTs without an API is very difficult. Why? Many standards. Very difficult to tie all the data together. With Morales API, very, very easy. Another important success story is World Wide Web, uh, very well known in the gaming community, has uh, over 50,000 users. Or at least when the market was high, they had 50,000 users. Uh, they did a lot of alphas. Go to market quickly. It's a fun game. People love it. Go to market quickly. They had very few features to begin with. You basically could walk around and speak to others. That's it. And your wallet was shown. But they had a nice vibe, nice graphics, nice community that started to grow from this very small feature set and grew very, very quickly. Added things, added features, and it expanded scope with time. Uh, so all in all, to summarize everything we discussed, to, to make something successful, in my mind, is that we, we need to enter the market fast with good alpha. And before that, we even need to have a reason for existence, as you remember. After that, you got to give feedback, because you don't want to be building for six months. No one cares. Build for a week. Show it. No one cares. Perfect. You spent a week. You can spend another week doing something else. Maybe people like that. Uh, get feedback. Strengthen and grow community. Listen to them. Make them feel empowered that they make some decisions and that you're really taking, taking care of them. Uh, iterate quickly and yeah, goes to step two. This may take a few times and it's fine. It's, it's better to go to market quickly, iterate quickly and get feedback and not build something that people don't care about. Finally, if you're watching this, maybe online, if you're watching this online, you're watching this offline and you want to join us, you like our mission of building de uh, tools for devs, uh, we're very focused on infra. We're very focused on ensuring that devs can, can, can be devs and not infra because uh, if we don't focus on devs, devs cannot build, or devs spend eight months building, and we cannot delight the user. We cannot delight the user, this industry will go to not mainstream. It will maybe be niche, but it's got to go mainstream. OK, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Very good to be here. Go, uh, if you want some free tutorials, go on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Have a good day. See you.